ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Matt to uh, Pro Wrestling Report. I thought we had discussed this. You made a request, but I did not honor that request. Welcome to the Pro Wrestling Report. This is Davey and Really? I ever wore the wrong side. shirt. The man they call <laughs> Meathead. Meathead, welcome back. Welcome, actually, your first week in the new edition here of the Pro Wrestling Report. It's been a long time coming. I remember the days, Damian Nelson. Three uh, three shoots in one night. You know, they talk about two days in three. football. What? They talk about two days in football. I remember the, let's air three episodes in one night during, uh, say, the summer of August 1999. <laughs> let's knock them all out. Trying to predict how something's going to be three weeks down the road. That's what it's good to have Carl around. He's a great predictor. We did get some calls from the NAACP last week thanking us for having two black men on the World Wide Web. Uh, but um, Carl, and they also thanked us for both, or excuse me, for you and because Carl. You're not. I'm, Carl assumes I'm. We black. clarified that last week. You're yeah, not. You're they published. also, they also thanked you for being conscious. This is the Pro Wrestling Report, the world's most watched wrestling news program. Not just because we say that, but because the numbers back it up. Damian Nelson, once again, sitting here alongside Meathead. Let's take you on our 30-minute journey. Yeah, that will be the pro wrestling report for this week. Oh, and go! What are you doing with that thingy? It was so pleasant sitting here last <laughs> week without the megaphone. Or the, I'm sorry, what is it called? The mega mite. <laughs> it's a mega mite. The mega mite. I've got some mega like punch a, in here, too. It's like a tribute to a megaphone. Whoever designed the pro wrestling report to be just Damian Nelson and the meathead, have you not watched this program? Have you not seen that? It's all about ratings. <laughs> Apparently. Let's get some conflict. Let's get the black guy and what guy to argue. This is not PTI, folks. Let's start with World Wrestling Entertainment news and a man who you're a big fan of, Chris Benoit, set to return to WWE TV. He's got a house show event that he will be doing this weekend, which is his reintroduction to the company. <laughs> and then after that, <laughs> his lights are off. And then after that, uh, we should see Chris Benoit puppet hey. on WWE. Hey, TV. That, that was good. Was hey, good. Hey, welcome, that was a, welcome to the, a, the set here. That was a shot. Now, we saw Kurt Angle, not Kurt Angle, I'm sorry, more on that later, Mark Henry take out uh, Chris Benoit a long while back. Apparently, the long-term plan was for Kurt Angle, or for, I keep saying Kurt Angle, <laughs> Chris Benoit to come back and get his sweet little revenge on Mark Henry. Well, Mark Henry is now injured. Damn. And we won't get a chance to see him on TV for quite a while. But we do see Chris Benoit returning uh, after being taken out by Mark Henry. Where? How should Chris Benoit fall back into the equation on SmackDown? Because I don't think it's a secret or anybody missed the fact that he was sort of floundering a little only by the way he was being booked prior to his departure. Chris Benoit is going to be able to come back, be a huge face. It's kind of hard to make Benoit a heel. He just doesn't go over as a heel very well. The only problem is SmackDown sucks. If you bring back Benoit Basically. and you throw Cena on the SmackDown, who cares? The Japanese cowboy, the boogeyman... Uh, whoa, whoa, what about the Boogeyman? They're all gimmicks. Let's get oh, some. Well, I no. love the Boogeyman. Okay. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love the Boogeyman. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. But it's just too gimmicky, too cornball-y, too... The only guy on there right now that's even worth watching is the, the new... wrestling god. No, 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 no. Oh. It is the new the United... commentary god. The new United States champion, his name... Mr. Kennedy! Now you wait. Kennedy! Congratulations going out to Kamikaze Ken. It's Ken Kennedy now. I wonder if you got that memo. Um, let's talk about WWE Unforgiven, the pay-per-view offering from WWE coming up next weekend on pay-per-view. Raw brand. Raw brand, yes. Most matches have been announced. Let's start at the bottom of the card and work our way up. Um, it will be Kane they were going one-on-one. In about 20 minutes, too. Yes. <laughs> Kane will go one-on-one. Like they remembered, oh, we got a pay-per-view to sell. Kane will go one-on-one -on -one with, ooh, my God. <laughs> uh, what do we expect in that matchup? After seeing on this past week's Raw, Kane owning Umaga, the first person to actually uh, bitch him out, to be honest with you. Bitch him out's Kane. a great term. Bitch him out as in uh, the guy that rolls out of the ring and backs off. Uh, uh, uh. Bitch Did he start slapping his belly? No, uh, that was Kamala. Oh, ha -ha. oh, oh, oh. You know what we need in this match is more mic time for Armando Alejandro Estrada. Are those Cubans he carries? Um, in his pocket, I mean. <laughs> sure. Except, why would you snap? <laughs> Cubans. 
Are you going to pick a winner? Oh, did you want me? <laughs> yes, if you don't mind. Apparently, uh, if you've been listening to the uh, Fantasy Sports Weekly program on ESPN 1510. Because you're on the radio, too. Nights, I've been known to filibuster. Basically, keep talking when you ask me a question. And just keep talking about stuff. About the Umaga. So you pick Umaga to go over in that matchup at Unforgiven. From Toronto. Sold out. The Air Canada Center. Your winner and still undefeated. Ooh, Maga. Is that just so you can say his name again? Yes. <laughs> and then it will be, I pick uh, Umaga in that matchup as well, too. Kane's almost useless nowadays, to be honest with you folks. I mean, it's just, he's the big red mid-carter, um, is what it's <laughs> going to be. I know. And then in a match I'm actually very intrigued by, it will be Carlito going one-on-one -on -one with Randy Orton. Now, Carlito is no legend, will, will, of course, be one in the future, I think. But it is one-on-one -on -one Orton versus Carlito. Me, what are we going to see in that matchup? We're going to see wrestling. We're going to see some good wrestling. Um, we're going to see uh, maybe a little interference from Trish on behalf of Randy Orton. Because they're on behalf of Randy. He already did that. You think this is Jericho Christian, WrestleMania 20? <laughs> but it'll, the, uh, the uh, excuse me, Carlito Orton match should happen obviously after her match with Lita. Let her be the face going into the title match, and then have her swerve on Carlito. So you pick Orton. I pick Orton. With a Trish uh, interference. interference. A run-in, if you will. Interesting. Uh, Carlito's got to go over in that matchup. He's got to. He's so got to. And he will. I think he will. I think it's Carlito in that matchup for me. Uh, and the match you just alluded to before, in her last match, she gets a shot at the WWE Women's Championship. It is Trish Stratus going one-on-one -on -one against the WWE Women's Champion Lita in Trisha's hometown of Toronto, Canada, in her last match. With all that being said, Meathead, who shall win that matchup? Lita. Why so? Because who cares if she wins the belt? She's retired. But it's yeah. her hometown. You get that hometown pop. Bye, Trish. Thanks for all your service, Trish. By the way, thanks. Can we see your booties? Trish. See? She, she hasn't done the Playboy thing. Right? Has not. She's a wrestler, not a diva. Uh, she came in as a diva, became a wrestler. Also, along the lines of one that we have seen in her movies, and I have seen her in some softcore porn on Cinemax, uh, Candice Michelle, who is becoming a wrestler. I picked Trish to go over in that particular matchup just because of the wow factor in her hometown of Toronto. Now, remember, folks, at SummerSlam, huh? Women are wrestling? At SummerSlam, it was Cena in his hometown up against Edge. Uh, and, of course, Cena did not win that matchup, but I think that that's all going to pay off. We'll talk more about that in a minute. The next match is the Spirit Squad. You never know which two you're going to get. Usually, Kenny is always wrestling. Kenny's the lead. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they go up against the Bushwhackers 2006, otherwise known as the Highlanders. Robbie. By the way. And Rory. I'm Robbie. Yeah. By the way. Who wins that matchup for the Tag Team Championships? It is now the Highlanders, your new tag team champions, and the dismemberment of the Spirit Squad. People have been talking about that for a very long time. It's time. What right evidence here. is there that the Spirit Squad should be broken up? Because they've never used them. They, you know, they came in. The Remember? Spirit Squad, you know what the Spirit Squad is? Mean Street Posse, 2006. In jumpsuits. Yeah. And two more of them. There are only three of the Mean Street Posse, I believe. Can you name two out of three? Can I? I, can, I no. Joey Abs. Yes. Pete Gas. I can't name a third. I was hoping you were going to get You did name two of the yeah. three. Um, I completely disagree. I think the Spirit Squad, remember, it's five on two, no matter which way you look at it. I think the Spirit Squad wins that matchup, retains the Tag Team Championships, keeps together at least two of the five for a little while I'll here. I'll tell you what I saw on the previous Raw, where all these matches for the pay-per-view showed up. Um, you know what I saw was actually a development of maybe a Tag Team division. There was a little bit of that happening, yes, including Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Eugene. Now, Hacksaw's been on this very program. Yes, he has. And he's choked the life out of Frank Cosentino. Yeah, that's... Is that why Frank's not around? He's afraid. The show. Oh! You want to get away from that wrestling stuff. You know what's odd is Hacksaw Jim Duggan, I don't believe, has a WWE contract. He's paid per appearance. What if he ended up winning the titles? With boy, oh boy, what, and no. No. I mean, you've got the Highlanders, you've got Eugene and Hatch. I'm Robbie! You've got uh, Spirit Squad, you've got uh, Val Venus used to be in the mix with this group, but be. now it's Charlie Haas. Haas. Glad they brought him back. Yeah. Good job. But, 
as you said, we see a regrowth of the tag team division on WWE Raw. Maybe that was all part of that plan. Possibly. Yet you do still have your Val Venuses who sit at home and occasionally appear on Heat. Where does Heat exist now? On the internet, on the World Wide Web. Hmm. Did you pick a winner? Highlanders. Is it your first day here? I just don't pay attention, <laughs> that's all. Uh, and then the matchup that hey, oh, wow, most wow, wow, people, wow. including you, are going to order the pay-per-view to see. The reason that people will be turning in and ordering this particular pay-per-view show. It is a main event caliber match for the Intercontinental Championship. It is a returning Jeff Hardy going one-on-one -on -one for the from? Intercontinental Champion, Where is he Johnny returning from? He's, been He's on, returning from his three-year absence from WWE. He's been on Raw for two weeks. So. And in that time, he's had a meteoric rise. To the top of the ladder. You say it's a one on one for the Intercontinental Championship. You say he's returning. The man's been on TV for almost a month now. By the time the pay per view comes on, he's been on a month. He is Where recently is returned? returned. Okay, thank you. Fix yourself. Intercontinental Strap Molina you is the midget. Molina is the third person in that matchup. What impact, if any, will she have on Jeff Hardy's clearly obvious victory that is forthcoming for the Intercontinental Championship? Molina now, he is a former Intercontinental Champion. Remember who he beat? He was a champion for two days. I take it back. Who did he beat? He, he beat... Uh, behold the How King. many people have a win over Triple H? Does uh, Johnny Nitro have a win over Triple H? Vince McMahon has a win Does over Johnny Triple H. Nitro have a win over Triple H? Johnny Nitro hasn't had a match over Triple I H. I vote that Jeff Hardy will win that matchup, Meathead. What do you say? No. It'll be Johnny Nitro, and it'll be thanks to Molina. She will save the belt one more time, but this, unfortunately, will be the beginning of a longer feud. Uh, the only good thing about Jeff Hardy, besides the fact that he's tubby and he makes me laugh, because he's a, he entertains you. He's, he's a, a phenomenal athlete. Fatty, fatty. Have you looked at him? There's a reason why the shirt don't come off, fatty. I don't know if you saw Rob this past week, but he actually did have a little bit of a more revealing of a gut. Yeah. Well, you know what happened? What had happened was is he was, was in TNA, and, and you know they they do a show twice a month, and he just he wasn't showing up or. Being a part of those shows, real. So in Jeff's I'm defense, I'm Jeff Hardy. Get in my bed. You pick Nitro. I, I pick, pick Jeff John, Hardy. Jonathan Nitro. You pick Nitro just because you don't want to pick Jeff Hardy. No, because Jeff Hardy. Again, we're going to mention this on this very program. Over right here, and right over now. And over. The money is in the face chasing the heel for the ch championship belt. This will be a longer feud. Hardy will prevail at the end. Who is going to make the WWE more money? This particular feud is going to make money because Jeff Hardy is chasing the belt that currently resides on Johnny Knight. Jeff Hardy has a pretty devout following. Remember, yeah. he was the biggest moneymaker for TNA. And you, know and you know what? And you know what's really funny too is the people that follow him now are all fat girls as well. Ooh. Put sweatpants and no, you know what? I have on their ass. I just, I did that on purpose. I have nothing against fat girls. Love Do you know, we, we emanate from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, folks, and <laughs> which one is of the greatest cities in the world. fat girls. And uh, while I wasn't going to say that, we were recently voted as America's drunkest city. <laughs> in your face, Milwaukee! <laughs> the next matchup, folks, is a Hell in the Cell match. We haven't seen one of those in quite a while. It is <laughs> quite a while means less Vince than a year. and Shane McMahon teaming up with the ECW heavyweight champion Big Show going up against Shawn Michaels and Triple H, D-Generation X, Hell in the Cell, McMahon's and Big Show versus DX. They just had an epiphany. You know what they're trying to make ECW? They're trying to take those last fans that still watch TNA, and they're trying to make them watch ECW. I think that's the combination right there. Okay. Umaga. In that particular matchup that Umaga is not in, <laughs> who and how will it all play out, do you think, we have? Hell in a cell. Oh, I'm sick of Wild it. Wild bump by Shane. I, I'm, I'm sick of it. Shane will take his bump. He'll come back for one more week with bandages and whatever. He'll be gone. This will take a bump. DX needs to go away. We knew it was coming. We thought it would end at SummerSlam. It just keeps going on. Take like that the, little rabbit. Your winner of the match, DX. You, th you say DX is going to win. All right. I think this one could go either way. Uh, you've seen DX own the McMahons for several weeks, and now they're re-energized and happy because they've, they've tasted their own blood, and now they're, no, they're Triple H and Shawn Michaels, and they're great, and blah, blah, blah. The plan, the no, there's no secret that the plan for Degeneration X was a short-term thing. 
Uh, it has gone much longer than anyone had initially speculated. Or however, was. however, I will say they are continuing to be very successful. If you listen to the pop that the crowd gives when DX comes out, they have they're a hit with part of the core audience of WWE. Hulk Hogan still gets a pop with the crowd, and he shouldn't. That doesn't mean that we want to see him. But apparently, you don't want to see him. No, I don't. Apparently, if you sell merch and you get a pop from the crowd, you got a gimmick forever. Jeff Hardy in the Intercontinental Championship matchup, ladies and gentlemen, one on one with Johnny Nitro. Yeah, we already mentioned that. Match. Oh, I'm sorry, that was written twice on here for some reason or another. The main event for the World Wrestling Entertainment Championship it is Edge one on one with John Cena, Edge's hometown of Toronto, Canada. Will John Cena get the receipt on the victory that he suffered at SummerSlam in his hometown? In this, what looks to be, no matter which way you slice it, the last match for a long time between Edge and John Cena. Because if John Cena loses, John Cena goes to SmackDown for three years. Now, is that Why punishment? does that matter? Why does it matter? Let me ask you this. Did you know that Super Crazy was a free agent? Did you care? I guess it was on WWE.com. No, it wasn't. Twelve links deep. Uh, exactly. It was buried in the back page. Being on Raw, being on SmackDown, apparently being on ECW doesn't matter. The fact that they oversell this crap about, this is the first time would you have ever believed that Shawn Michaels and D-Generation X and Triple H would be in an ECW ring. Who cares? That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean squat. Especially when you saw him the night before. Exactly. And then the ECW champions hanging out with the McMahons. Who, Who cares? Thank you. The main event. Notice how I did that again. <laughs> Edge Cena. Lita in the you're corner of Edge. broadcast journalism right there, how you're staying on it. You're going to get an answer. It was like a reset. That's what they say in the business. Okay. Uh, your winner and still WWE champion, the rated R superstar, Edge. Cena to SmackDown. Keep in mind, folks, that the week after Unforgiven's pay-per-view is the launch of SmackDown on the CW Network. Clearly a waste of time. What I mean by that is... SmackDown's lacking stars. Per Linda McMahon's own admission, which we talked about recently on the show here, they need help over on SmackDown. Is it a smart business move by WWE to just take John Cena and transplant him over to uh, WWE SmackDown? Trying to sell merch and uh, buy rates and ratings. and They think that Cena carries an audience. But there's the, there's the, that, that's the point right there. Is will those fans who are watching Raw, who are not watching SmackDown... Of which I believe we are too. Will uh, I can't? I do watch that. Will they transition over to SmackDown and follow their superstar John? And I'm not watching SmackDown because I like it. I watch it for my job. SmackDown sucks, and no. Sir, if do you want me to restate the question? If, uh, if let me finish. Can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? Notice how that time I was not interrupting you. Thus, you can. Can finish. I finish? Can I finish? If I were a fan of John Cena's, and I only watched Raw because John Cena was there, I would not move over to SmackDown knowing how awful it is. John Cena's only going to be on SmackDown. If it's a two-hour program, he's only going to be on in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe a backstage interview and a match. And you know that he's going to be on it either between 7.55 and 8.05, or he's going to be on from about 8.40 to 9 o'clock. They're Interesting dynamics, folks. Send us your unforgiven thoughts. and uh, if you want Send to all your thoughts, even the unforgiven ones. You can visit us at MaxSportsOnline.com. Visit the new PWR subsite of MaxSportsOnline.com. Hop on over to the message board. Send us your one question, and uh, we will be getting to your emails for this week in just a few minutes right here in this particular program. Now let's move on over into total nonstop action TNA news, and let's talk about their flagship program, Impact, which, again, last week only scored a .8 rating. Now, I say only. In cable world, that's not horrible. A .8 rating. However, it is their third week below a 1.0 rating. Mita, the question is, Is did you see Impact last week? I see every Impact. Again, my job here. I can, I have to I can tell you why. I have it right. I figured it all out. It, the phone has rang, like the phone that Don West has, oh. for whatever reason. Oh. Didn't we see Bobby Heenan do that with the banana phone on primetime? But be that as it may. Oh. I think the reason that they weren't able to achieve a higher rating is because we saw Petey Williams, who I think is one of the greatest athletes in the world, with the single greatest finishing maneuver in the history of professional wrestling. I'll go with that. I like that move. I love the it. single greatest finishing maneuver in the history of professional wrestling. 
wrestles in a match, yet never executes the Canadian destroyer. I, don't think I want it to be reason. Christmas every day. I don't think that's the reason the ratings are down, but I did I wonder, I did wonder why he was in the match and he didn't get to knock off his finisher. Even if it's not going to end the match, which, of course, in wrestling... you got to have... Every guy has to be able to hit his spots in a match. That's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, what did you think of last week's episode of Impact? Overall. Get rid of Don West. Dead red phone. LAX. Like him. Like him. Actually, it's, a, it's a well done gimmick. It, I didn't think I, I'm sorry, is, I didn't think I'd actually like Conan. Again. That's what I was fixing to say. <laughs> I did not think there would ever be a day, and this WWE 24 7 This green stuff's got to stop. <laughs> That I would like to see Conan in the ring and hear him on the mic. Well, but of course, what else happens when he hops right on the microphone? You know, crossing the border into the Spanish announce area on Alonso. Got a great feud there. Great feud there LAX has with AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels. And again, I question why we see the two of them put in a tag team scenario together when you've got two phenomenal talents. I'm okay with it. Get that phenomenal. Oh, I got it. It was bad. I'm okay with it now because you know what? They have a common bond, a common goal. And uh, they were X division guys, and now they're going to be wrestling for the belts in the, uh, you know, what did it call Ultimate X match for the tag team straps. I'm okay with that. You're one and sole champion on that one. Obviously, is going to be LAX because they are hot right now. They are Latino hot, not Latino team. Oh, last week on Impact, the one thing that was most significant to me of the entire episode was the final few minutes when Jeff Jarrett came out for his public execution. Ugh. And folks, let me tell you, as bad as it was, it was great all at the same time because you wrestling fans made your point. Jeff Jarrett could not get a word out edgewise. You did everything that could have been done to make it known that you, very devote TNA fans, notice I almost said ECW there, TNA fans, don't like this man. That's that's not a slip of the tongue. Yet. It, it, it is not, because when you look at TNA, and we'll dig more into this in a future episode, but when you look at TNA, you see ECW, but you don't all at the same time. But the key thing about that Jarrett promo, there is such a thing as heel heat. There's such a thing as face uh, you know, pops. And either you're getting cheered for or you're getting booed for. The worst thing you could have in the arena, if you're a professional wrestler, is silence. That's the worst thing you could have. However... I have learned of something new, something called hate heat. People have compared Jeff Jarrett to Triple H as far as their place in the company and forever putting themselves on top of the car. Whether that comparison is, exists or not, Triple H never had hate heat. Triple mm -hmm. H, maybe from a few people in the audience. Hulk Hogan has hate heat. No. He did in WCW okay. at the end of his run. Okay, he had, he, had, he had between heel and hate heat. I have never seen it so prevalent as I did when Jeff Jarrett was in the ring, and you TNA fans simply did not give him the opportunity to even be heard. I got another example of hate heat. WrestleMania 21, Brock Lesnar, Phil Dover. The fans booed that match out of the building. I got another one for you. ECW main event in the Hammerstein Ballroom. Batista, big show, booed right out the door. Well... Um, it was very interesting to see. Now, the next step, fans, is again, remember, silence is the key. But I will commend the TNA audience at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. Now, how did the chant go? You suck. You suck. And I mean, prevalent, dominant, dominant. everybody in there, and Jeff Jarrett could not get a word. Thank God it was for TV. Because all he did that for was for the TV audience. And those of you in the arena watching that and being a part of that, Again, commending, uh, commendable efforts. How many TNA you. tapings have you been to? I have been to one TNA taping. Okay. I have not been there yet, but I would imagine, even though you, it's getting kind of stale being in the same building and over and over, kind of like a WCW Saturday nights, but that building's got to be hot. Yes, indeed. It is a unique atmosphere. Very unique atmosphere. Um, let's move on over to ECW News, and there have been more details released about Kurt Angle's release from the company. Uh, in a little bit of news bit that we got our hands on, I'll tell you about some of the stuff that was said. Susie finds it. <laughs> See, I was pausing pretty good there. Some of the stuff that was said. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Kurt Angle, who uh, had an issue after he had, he got a stern warning from Vince McMahon 
uh, about learning of a drug policy violation. What happened was, what had happened was, Kurt Angle was taking drugs, I believe painkillers, his prescription expired, thus meaning he failed the drug policy, uh, was suspended for 30 days, which was news that came out of this whole release thing, um, and was given a very stern warning by Vince McMahon. Apparently that, on top of everything else Kurt's been dealing with, really sent him over the edge. Incoherent messages being sent to WWE agents, or producers as they're now called, and uh, other talent, and just very bizarre behavior from Kurt Angle leading up to his release. The fear on the part of WWE was that Kurt Angle was going to permanently injure himself if allowed to continue performing. Lots of heat on him from the ECW stars because of his irrational behavior, and lots of just concern on behalf of WWE for Kurt's future well-being. Now, there is one huge concern coming now. A lot of people have speculated whether or not Kurt Angle would go to TNA, whether he'd go to Ring of Honor, whether he'd go participate in Japan, whether he'd join an MMA organization. Well, there's a lot of concern on behalf of World Wrestling Entertainment that he would also do that, not because they would lose out on their star Kurt Angle, but for the future injury that he would put himself uh, at risk for. I think a lot of the concern also has to do with the fact that this wellness program that has been so accurate and taking care of so many people, well, they let Kurt Angle slide. Tell me that they didn't let him slide. They let him slide. They let him slide. Because Kurt Angle's a bigger name than Rob Van Dam, a bigger name than some of the others that have been released. Eddie Guerrero, according to the wellness program, before it was actually written in paper, was let go. I mean, remember, Eddie Guerrero was actually gone, what, a year? Because he had demons. Well, he actually was in rehab, though. I mean, it's a bit of a different that. situation. But he went into rehab because they told him that you're not going to have another job here unless you go into rehab. We got an email from Brian Keegan. I'm sorry, Andrew Keegan from Glasgow, Scotland. Hey! That's across the pond, by the way. Oh, the Highlanders. See, we are over truly there. international. I don't think. That, yeah, okay. It's good. The question is uh, Do you think CM Punk is being geared up for a main event? And uh, I think so, is what this emailer says. And I would do it at WrestleMania 23 by having him in a Money in the Bank ladder match. What do you guys think? Well, I think that CM Punk found himself and found his calling when he slapped that little punk, Sean oh, Shannon Moore, in the face. Thank you. Uh, on ECW this past Tuesday. But I was CM Punk, Tweed. CM Punk is one of the few stars that they're building and actually creating and focusing on an ECW. And I think if they continue along the current path, we could potentially see him in a main event not... If not at WrestleMania, then certainly at pay-per-view down the road. I agree. I agree uh, the wholeheartedly. Having watched CM Punk here, obviously, in Milwaukee, uh, CM Punk is the real deal. Now, I don't know if I buy into the straight edge thing. I don't know the man personally. So I'll have to take him for his word. Even though we were lucky enough to see him when he was uh, in his younger days wrestling here locally for Mid-American Wrestling. Uh, I believe he bled on me in a match, as a matter uh, of fact. CM Punk always, and, and one person who I know for myself personally looked at as Always being that person who was going to be a Pepsi star one sucks. day, and uh, that's a you know what that's a gimmick that hasn't caught on yet, as far as but ECW. yet you keep trying. No, no, I mean as far as ECW goes, as far as the mainstream media, I mean anybody that knows CM Punk knows that's. I mean if you see the tattoo, he's got a Pepsi tattoo on his arm. Pain clinic, yeah. or either or, sure, whichever way you like to look at it. Uh, thank you for that email. We've got a couple more emails we'll be getting to in the next few weeks here, on the, or next week here on the show. But let's talk about our top five. What we do each week is tell you who we think the five top ask you this. names are in the professional wrestling Let business me ask you this. for that week. Frank Costantino is not on this very program. He is not on this program, no. How are you feeling knowing that you have to leave the segment and throw it to me? Oh, I can do that. Okay. I'm a broadcast journalist. Because normally it's... Ah, now we're going to the top five, and I'm going to do my Frank Costantino impersonation right now. Now we're going to the top five each week. I can't do Frank. I'm sorry. I was about to send him up, roast him, if you will. Let's start with the man on my left. <laughs> See, you can't say, and you can't do the gimmick when the three of us are on either. Boy, that's a lovely white shirt. Thanks for hanging out with us. You can't do that either. How are you feeling about Let's that? Let's go to the man on my left who can't let things go. Meet at number <laughs> top five. <laughs> number five on my top five list is... Um, <laughs> there are five people on that list, right? Well, a man that's, probably, minute remaining. A man that's probably never going to make it to five feet tall. He's a little bastard. The little green midget guy that hangs out with Finley all the time. We'll call him Short Stack. Short Stack. Number five on my top five. Number four on the top five is super crazy. Um, I was always a fan. Uh, debuted on Raw. getting low. <laughs> number four on the top five is super crazy. 
Number three on my top five is going to go to Trish Stratus. Thank you for becoming a wrestler. Thank you for working at it. Thank you for doing your job. Number two on my top five is going to go out to, I didn't want to say it, but Edge. Edge, oh. you, uh... Didn't you mean Jeff Hardy? Edge, you have been, uh... Putting yourself over as champ, and it's been working. And number one on the top five, the man I alluded to earlier, is Mr. Kennedy! Now you wait. Kennedy! That's my top five. And ladies and gentlemen, the definitive top five, the one all of you have clamored to your television screens and computer screens LCD to watch screens. and such. Uh, number and five those. on my list is the uh, legend killer, Randy Orton. Just because he gave the RKO to Trish on Monday Night Raw. I love that kind of stuff. Uh, King Booker, because everyone should hail King Booker. Number three, and no particular order, is Jeff Hardy, the future Intercontinental Champion. After he did the five two and tap, the four. Two tap, two tap, two tap. After he did the five and four, he said, and uh, by the way, in no particular order. <laughs> Next is Sanjay Dutt from TNA. And uh, the top name on my top five list this week is Carlito, because... That's cool. That's not cool. We'd like to thank you all for tuning in to Pro Wrestling Report for this week. Uh, hop on over to MaxSportsOnline.com to see the wrap-ups throughout the week of the WWE and TNA programming. And we'll be back next week here with another new episode of the Pro Wrestling Report. In Milwaukee, we will continue on the television airwaves. On the World Wide Web, we will see you next week here on Max uh, Pro Wrestling Report. Get confused because you wore that shirt. Thanks a lot, folks.